Put my chicken inside some Louis and some Valentino. Put my bro inside some Gucci and some Gucino. They want my money like this a casino. <laughs> Welcome to Trizor HQ. You have to do the um, MTV Welcome to My Crib. Yeah. I'll show you my. I'll show you the office. We'll start here. This is my toilet. Oh, this is the sign. This is the kitchen. I won't show you in there. It's boring and it's half done, but it's going to be cute at some point. And then, oh, ignore this mess. <laughs> Welcome to the warehouse bit. This is where the. This is where it goes down. Like this is where the order packing happens. How much foot is it? How many? This whole place. Yeah. Like 2,500 oh, wow, nice. square feet. But um, yeah, literally all my stock is in all these drawers. I keep my millions of rings. This is my iconic um, F off ring. Oh, I'm not even wearing one. See my iconic F off ring. Oh, which one would you say is your most favorite piece that you saw? This one. Oh, it made me a lot of money, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you it. This is literally my most popular piece because it says F off. It's a lovely little heart. I says F off. See me in. You know what, Struggling. Mean. Oh yeah, your camera's not good enough for it. I mean, it's like <laughs> wide. Sorry, oh God, that sounds so rude. Yeah. But yeah, it says F off on it. That's my most popular by far. It's like, you know, controversial. <laughs> I think The Sun wrote about it and who else wrote about it? Yeah, people love slagging it off. People love saying like, oh my God, she put the F word on her rings. <laughs> but crazy. it's fun, who cares? I love it, but well, um, people love that one. Definitely. All my stuff's in these drawers. See, we want to make it nice like this, but it's a little bit of a mess. But this is where the packing happens. That's okay. my cute, whatever. And my sign, my trezor sign. Oh, yeah, this one. Iconic, my iconic trezor sign. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Perfect, perfect, perfect. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is where I live in this corner. Okay, so <laughs> what happens over here? Is this where you just. This is where I live, right? So I, all my stuff happens here. I do like influencer stuff on this table usually. It's got like the packet, the parcels and stuff. I personally pack them for influencers. And then my jewelry's out here. Like I use it for content or whatever. Obviously my messy paper stuff. And then, so this corner, right? We're launching this new thing is where people will be able to come in and have an experience. Mm -hmm. so they'll be able to make their jewelry. They'll be able to witness it being engraved. So this corner is gonna be that soon but right now <laughs> it's empty right now but it'll be something soon we've got a lot of empty space because we've only been in here like a month ish two ish okay. two months so and then this is production basically okay. so we have our machinery like we have our laser engraving machine we have the cutting machine on the floor over there we have the printer 3d printer yeah so 3d printer does like when we have a design that we want to make we will 3D print it into something like this, yeah. this blue one, and then we'll send it off to our manufacturer, like Turkey, Italy, China, and they'll, you know, make a nice, oh my God, don't do that. Make a nice, <laughs> make a nice gold piece for us, like these pieces, and it'll be cool. Um, yeah, this is basically where all the messy stuff goes down. So you've got all your tools and stuff in here, and I like to keep it separate. <laughs> sometimes when it's making noise, I just close the doors. Like, I'm just like <laughs> locking you guys in. I just don't want to hear it sometimes. <laughs> but it's nice to have your own space to do that. And, oh, they're in here. They're going to be part of the vlog. Okay. So this is where we just filmed for the episode. Okay. And yeah, this is my studio. It's my, all my big lights and stuff. But pretty much that's all, that's all it is. I don't have any more rooms to show you. That's good. Well, that's good. How was that like, you know, seeing that online and then So the first there? thing I actually saw before that was um, Company's House. Oh. Yeah, so he obviously was, well, he was a director of my business for a while before he tweeted about it. Okay. So when that happened, when I looked at Company's House, I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was smooth. I was like, that's nice. <laughs> and then when the tweet came out, you must have had so much reception. My reception was weird. Oh, I'll tell you about that. Okay, wait for the question. I'll yeah. give you my... Uh, yeah. Because uh, I've got so much to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's crazy. It was fun, literally. But yeah, man, no, that's good. Um, when I came here, this is one of the biggest offices I've been to, and you're the youngest person. You reckon? Yeah, maybe yeah. My, my network isn't as great, but... Damn. No, to be fair, it's a big unit because we have to have a warehouse space. Because yeah. obviously we pick and pack in here, so you'll see like I've got half where it's all drawers and all. You can't really use that space, so you can only really use it for picking and packing. So. Okay, that's nice. That's and why. One question may, that people may want to ask you is, why not dropshipping? I'm pretty sure you heard of yeah. dropshipping model. Um, it's more passive. Mm. A lot of people online are talking about it and it's, it's like it's that lifestyle. They're, they're living on the yeah. beach, laptop lifestyle. Why mm. not? Why personal? Personal? Why are you getting personal? What's the benefits? Of to be honest, a lot of 
why I started this business was personal. Okay. So the inspiration behind the gold was like being South Asian, having gold in my culture. Mm -hmm. Like if you're South Asian, if you're like you're, any of you are South Asian, you'll know like, mm -hmm. I like my grandma wear big gold bangles and yeah. stuff like that and you love it and, and even every girl loves a bit of jewelry do you know what I mean and, and you see it and you think like that's amazing I want to cover myself in gold but you can't afford that mm. you can't nobody at 18 can afford solid gold bangles all up their arm yeah. so my, my idea was like to be able to provide gold because of the inspiration from my childhood and for it to be able to be affordable. Yeah. So because it was so personal to me, it didn't feel right yeah. not being in the middle of it all. And I love that. I love being like in the middle of the storm. Like mm. it's so much, it's so much nicer to be able to see my products mm. physically, be there, be able to monitor how they're sent out. Mm. Like we pack them with love. Like you, I, like I love really? what I do. Seriously. So we pack them with love and it's just so much better that way, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's smooth, man. Welcome back to my channel, guys. It's Pokey Bex, baby. I'm here with the one and only Marnie from Trezor, and she's 19 years old. She started her own business with the investment of Low Sugar as well. So this is gonna be a very great jam-packed episode with lots of gems and tips that you can take on to then fulfill your business. But let's bring it back to the beginning because I feel like stories are the best way to tell stories and very true. Best way to give advice and wisdom. How did it begin for you? Was it humble beginnings? Um, was you always <laughs> entrepreneurial minded? I think my mum reckons I've always been entrepreneurial. She always says that like you do bits and bobs here and there, like you know your typical like you little lemonade stand or whatever type yeah. type. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I think I went down the, the sweets in school route as well. I mean I feel like every entrepreneur has a universal experience yeah. of doing that, yeah. but. Yeah, I've always been interested in, in being a part of a project and doing things and, 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 and you know, I like money and everyone likes money, so, but it's not all about the money, but that did play a part in it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And then I'm guessing at 17, you decided to start yeah. with the business. Yeah. Where was your mindset in terms of, okay, was you fully on the school wave? How was you in school? Mm. So I launched when I was 17, but I was planning prior to that and I was at college, I was doing like two BTECs and at A level. I did business at, at college and at, at uni as well. Uh, no, yeah, no, ugh, at school, I mean. I did GCC business yeah. and then I carried on in a BTEC at college. So I was always, you know, learning about business and interested in it, but it wasn't enough, you know, like I, I wanted to, I wanted to experience it. I wanted to do that. I wanted to do what I was learning about. But I also, it also was like a matter of, when I was younger, obviously I grew up with I'm um, Asian. I like, grew up with quite like a, uh, like a strict, like a strict dad, not massively strict, but strict in a sense that he wanted me to go down education, education only. Mm. So he didn't want me to get a job. Okay. He didn't want me like working, you know, missing out hours where I could have been doing homework and 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 working in like a dessert place or something like that. Yeah. So my I kind of didn't have an option to mm. to get a job because it wasn't something that I was. You know, it was one something my dad was going to allow me to do. But you wanted money. But I wanted money, yeah. exactly. But I wanted money. That's the problem. I was like, I was like, where am I going to get it from then? <laughs> so that's where my kind of eBay stuff started, like my flipping um, stuff on charity, it's like from charity shops. Could you talk on that? Um, as I feel like a lot of people would like to know more about that side of sort of reselling yeah. stuff from charity. Uh, no, do you know what? It's like. <laughs> This was, I was I was doing it before resellers came around. Okay, like uh, I was just like this is like be, before you real real real, uh, real resellers. Like I was um, just honestly I just saw an opportunity because I'd seen I'd bought stuff online before. Yeah. I'd bought stuff like from Depop or whatever, and you look at it and you think like this is kind of expensive. Like, mm. This is a bit pricey. I wonder I wonder why they're selling it for this much. And and I think my my moment of realization was like when I was in a charity shop and I thought. Why is there a night jump on the rails? Mm. I, thought, I thought that's that's like fifty quid on Depop. Why is it like ten pound here? Mm. Yeah, that was my turning point, and I was like, hang on, it all kind of started <laughs> yeah. clicking. I was like, okay, let me have a go. So that's what I used to do, and it wasn't always like finding um, designer stuff. Sometimes it was small flips for like, like a pair of shoes or something like that. Yeah. And I, I lived, I lived where there was like a charity shop and a post office, like an ASDA and stuff like that. And it was like, I was between the three, just like, cause I didn't know, like, but you don't know about click and drop or anything like that, yeah. Royal Mail stuff. So I said, hey, for the post office, I'm trying to send this up. Like that, that's literally how I did it. And, yeah. and even though I would turn, turn, I would turn it around and I would make like not that much, like maybe five pound here, 10 pound there. Yeah. But 
Saving it up is what helped me to start Trezor because I wouldn't have had money otherwise. Uh, but that was my main source of income because I didn't have a job. You didn't have a job, you yeah. had to focus on education yeah. and then use that to start Trezor. How much did you start it with? So I started Trezor with 400 pounds. 400 pounds, yeah. 200 was mine, 200 was from my mum. I have a very, very supportive mother. Oh my God, both my parents are very supportive. But mm. my mum, like, she, okay, in school I'd say, right, I wasn't, I wasn't the best behaved child. Okay. Not like I was a little rebel, I was just like, I was just a little bit of a shit, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I was not that great. And my mum was kind of like, do something. Like, okay, if this money's gonna help you do something, go do something. So that's kind of why she let me have the 200 pound. I paid her back eventually after yeah. like, you know, six yeah. months or something, to be yeah. ages. But that's, yeah, I started with just 400 pounds. And then um, in terms of um, your first, I'm not sure if you was doing moulds at this time, but did you just literally pick some designs that you liked and then? No, so um, in the beginning, uh, like, you know, I mentioned where I lived, like there's, there was like a little jewellery shop. Mm -hmm. Not really a jewellery shop, more like a make your own kind of jewellery. So they'd have like charms and chains. Mm -hmm. I would buy chains from eBay and I would like put them together and stuff like that, different combinations. And that's what I was selling. But it wasn't like the product I've got now. Like mm -hmm. it was so like, like, Oh, so your business gone through stages. But. So many stages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like two years ago, my stuff was rubbish. Like I would never in a million years sell that. And my and my products now are completely, completely different to what to what I started with. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah. When you ever like evolve. But when would you say the stage came where we need to go online now, we mm. need to start doing national and international per yeah. se? When did that come about and what made you think to go that route? So I think it was like, so I had um, Instagram for Trezor for a while. Okay. I started on Instagram um, and I really didn't download TikTok for it until like March 2020. Okay, yeah. That was the first um, lockdown. And then my first viral video was in the August. So March, April, May, June, July, August, like a couple months later. Mm. And that's when really I had my massive volume of like when I had my first viral video, that was four and a half million views. Wow. So that is what brought on all the eyes that I had on my business. Okay. And, and it went viral at like a silly time, like 1am or something. So I had a lot of American people okay. like watching it. Mm. So a lot of my international orders started coming through that. Okay. And then once, once I had the base of like all those orders, yeah. that's when it kind of spread. Like I was like, okay, now I know that I can send to this country and I can send to that country. Mm. And I, would, I was shipping all over the place. Like countries I hadn't even heard of, I was mm. shipping to them. But it's crazy. It was like a turning point for my business was that this is like the volume of sales that I want to be doing. Yeah. Before we continue, if you're looking to get started in your investing journey, Freedom24 is a great place to start by firstly receiving a free share worth up to $1,000. This could be Tesla stock, Netflix, Disney, Microsoft, and many more. You can do this by clicking the link in my description below. Sorry to the young ones, but you do need to be 25 to receive the free share. You can invest and trade over 40,000 stocks, ETFs and bonds, which allows you to build a more balanced portfolio for your strategy. Freedom24 is also listed on the NASDAQ exchange as a ticket symbol FRHC. Remember, your capital's at risk. Invest safely. Now let's get on with the video. You see the 4.5 million video. Mm. Was it luck or was it strategy? Okay, I'll start now. Okay. I think with that video, um, well, I've had multiple that I've had a, a, over a million. But that was my very first one. Yeah. And the strategy at that point was consistency. Mm -hmm. It was every single, you don't understand, like every single day I was posting, like yeah. I was getting sick of seeing my own face. Like every day it was a TikTok and it was every day at 9 p.m. And it was um, alternating between um, a behind the scenes video. Mm -hmm. So like packaging video, a design video, a day in my life, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, showing showing the product like just showing it off like some music or showing how to style it mm -hmm. and then a funny one or one addressing a problem okay. so this was like the, the mix of both funny and addressing a problem and it was you know um, are you the girl that sells jewellery that won't turn your fingers green <laughs> everyone was like oh my god this is hilarious like, everyone was like this is so funny I love it and I was you know it was going up overnight and, and it was my very first brush of like you know having a viral video and it was like um I was on the TikTok homepage, like, you know, the, yeah. it was like the uh, hashtag page. small business. No, oh, no. oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Hashtag small business as the first one. And, oh. and I generally, you know, yeah, I think I started that trend. <laughs> that was yeah. Small business TikTok, like I'm an OG on small business TikTok. And I, I just like, um, when I had that one, it was my very first anything viral. Yeah. And it went mad, like, yeah. and it just, 
shot up. Like I, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get 500K. Little did I flip it. No, it was going to go to four and a half million. Oh, wow. Like it, it, it was like such a shock. And it was a silly time as well. So I think, like I said, I mentioned before, it was like a lot of Americans were watching it. So my sales were coming through at like 1 a.m. Like I, my phone's buzzing, right? I'm in bed. My phone's buzzing. Mm. And um, it's like, you know, the Shopify, ka-ching, ka-ching. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? It's much... I'm like, when I open it, like, Shopify, what are you doing? Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. I'm like trying to turn my phone on, my phone freezes. I'm like, what's going on? And then like, I'd, I'm, you know, on my iPad, like checking on TikTok and the views are going up, up, up. It's like 700K, 800, 1 million. Wow. And it just keeps going. Wow. And so I log into Shopify and there and it does the same thing. It freezes my whole screen. I can't look at anything because they're coming through really, really bad. Like I, I was like, I don't know, like, is this real? Like what's going on? Mm-hmm. It was like so many orders I was sitting packing on my own for a week because at this point I was still in my bedroom yeah. running out of my bedroom I sold out everything on my website every, every single thing was gone from that one video from that one video every single wow. thing and I had a lot of stock and from there it built like a residual customer per se so even after the video people will come back yeah. to check and people were coming that were like everything sold out I need to come back and when everything's back in stock oh. so it was that it was that video and then two months later another one and then the next month another one oh. which was like you know three million two million here a million there like so would you say for those coming up creating their own brand mm. making use of TikTok and their rarely it's like if you don't have TikTok what's the point like you're just mm. saying I don't want money like TikTok <laughs> do you seriously TikTok is so it's not even like a, it's not even a joke anymore like you need TikTok TikTok is like a, a, a base of your marketing now mm. any any type of business can use TikTok you see restaurants popping on TikTok mm. you see like your clothing brands everything can be done through something that has a reach like TikTok or a reach like Reels. And, and short form content, Reels, Shorts, TikTok, that's where it's at these days. That's what, what you need to be pouring your energy into. No, that's great, man. Wise words. Make sure you don't take notes. Again, TikTok is the way forward whether you like it or not. So you need to either jump on a wave or drown. Yeah. Um, you mentioned TikTok and social yeah. media. What would you say would be the best social media that has helped your business so far? Um, um, I think... TikTok initially, and then moving back to Instagram and, and doing it fresh with Reels. Oh. So Reels is also one of my main things is like, we, we hit like 30K and 50K in the same week, mm-hmm. followers in the same week. So it was like, well, I think we definitely got it at a good time. Mm-hmm. It's when it, Reels were popping, like everyone was like on Reels, on Instagram, yeah. on TikTok, whatever. Um, and again, it was during a lockdown. Mm. And so I think the social media helped, but also the, the pandemic and the situation that we were in, yeah. I think boosted it up a, quite a lot more. Okay, okay. And then in terms of other marketing methods, are you fond of Facebook ads? Is that? Yeah, so it's something we started recently. Um, yeah. Had a really bad experience with Google ads. Like, oh, really? Oh. <laughs> so bad. Like um, a couple of months back, I started with an agency and we put in like, I would say like six grand over two months, three, three grand a month. Okay, fair. Hmm. They made me 500 pounds. Oh, return? <laughs> yeah. Damn. 500 pound full stop Damn. that's it I mean I lost five and a half grand <laughs> like, yeah I mean at least you get to learn from those experiences yeah. and you take it forward you though. do you do get to learn from them but it was it was rubbish like it was so bad and it was terrifying because you know at this point I've got a business partner now mm-hmm. like I've got Lord Sugar to explain Ooh. I'm like ah. he's like money where's the money I'm like I don't know I don't know where it is <laughs> talking of um, mistakes and whatnot what about yeah. You know, expensive lessons and mistakes would you say you made on your journey getting to where you are today? I'd say like, people. Th- th- dealing with people? No, expensive people, like oh, employees. Yeah. Oh, okay. Employees. So, so when I uh, started with Lord Sugar, obviously you gave me this big chunk of money. I'm thinking, okay, I've got, I've got money to play with now. I can mess with it. Because we were, we were returning over a decent amount. But when you get like a big chunk of money, you think, okay, like now I have the freedom to really test and try things. Mm. So I hired a content creator. Okay. I hired a CAD technician. Mm-hmm. I hired a second girl for packing. Uh, tried to hire a social media manager. I wanted I wanted to expand my team because I was sick of doing everything myself. Yeah, I was really sick of it. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> so I finished. Um, but no, it was just a bit of burnout I was experiencing. So I felt I would try and delegate. Yeah. And so when I hired like a content creator, she was a she she was a fantastic photographer. Her photography was amazing, but it didn't work. Uh, it was not working and you know I had to pay this girl's salary and I was getting no return on the money my followers were dipping my content wasn't good enough mm. people were angry that I wasn't my face wasn't there anymore um, so it was an expensive lesson in the sense that shit now I've got to pay someone's salary for a month yeah. 
and it's not working it's not bringing me any money yeah. but definitely I think and, and one of my biggest expenses still is just people like is, is, is how much salaries are myself and then my employees and then whatever people who come and go freelancers whatever yeah. but my most expensive mistake was definitely like trying to hire too many people because yeah, well. I had to you know in the end end up letting a lot of them go and, and re-establishing my team to be quite a bit smaller Mm-hmm. But and also once you once you've hired someone you you're stuck with them like in a sense that they've got their notice period and stuff like that you have to pay them regardless mm-hmm. of whether you want to use them or not yeah. so that was definitely something that, that I learned. Talking of which, in terms of hiring people, you know, at such a young age, mm. you're dealing with people probably much older than you as well. Yeah, how everyone else is older than me. <laughs> wow, how was that experience of being the boss? Yeah, at such a young age and calling the shots and then having to. <laughs> you know, let go of people that are older than you and yeah. you just, you know, and I guess you're a friendly person, so I can assume yeah. you meet those friendly with your employees. And it's difficult. I think um, in the beginning, and it's, it's just, this doesn't go just for employees, it goes for people in general. Mm. It's like being so young, being a woman, being mm. friendly as I am, you get, in the nicest way possible, you get people taking the piss. Mm. You do. And, and it's like, people, people will take advantage of how nice you are yeah. because they can. Just because I can. And and in the beginning, it was a lot for me. It was like, I felt so overwhelmed having hiring people because I felt like a lot of imposter syndrome. I felt a lot of, who am I to be telling these people what to do? Like, who am I to tell you? But then at the end of the day, it's a job and I'm your employer. I have to tell you what to do. And when you think of it logically, it's easy. But when you think of it like with your heart, you think like, feel a bit bad, don't you? I hate shouting at people. I hate telling people off. I hate that. I hate all of that. But it has to be done. Mm-hmm. And when when it comes to it, you got to put on like you got to put on your business cap and, and get it over and done with. But there are a lot of struggles. I think a lot, especially in terms of being able to manage people, because I've never done that before. Mm-hmm. I'm just an older sibling. Like I've been able to manage my little little sister and my little brother. But I, how am I going to manage like 23 year olds and whatever? Like, mm-hmm. oh, it's not that 23 year olds are old, but that's still four years older than me at the moment. So, yeah. you know. Oh, just to let you guys know, she is 19 years yeah. old. Yeah, I'm 20 in two weeks though. <laughs> yeah. When this comes um, out, I'll probably be 20, I don't know. But yeah. yeah, so you started at 17, 18. No, yeah. that's, that's great, just to grow through some of the most pivotal years. Yeah. You know, ha- handling a business on the side. Talking of which, um, more, more about you on a personal level. Yeah. What are your hobbies? What do you do in your spare time? <laughs> Um, what do you do outside of, is jewellery life? You know, is jewellery is that- life, like, you know what it was, for, for a long time, all it was was my business. Mm. It was like, Mar- like is Marnie and Trezor come hand in hand? Yeah. Always. And, and from, I, I sacrificed a lot of like, going out, like, mm. you know, I never went clubbing or I never went like partying and, and I like, would spend so much time on my business and at college that you just ca- you'd catch me in the library or you'd I wouldn't be anywhere else mm-hmm. I, I I did a lot like um I missed out on a lot without realizing but looking back I really had no social life through most of my college through like even in the beginning of uni and then um only really now like since I've had Lord Sugar on board because mm-hmm. actually his team takes a lot of um responsibilities away from me like they, they they handle finance hr all the all the nitty-gritty difficult stuff that like you hate doing yeah. they will pretty much handle it so it's only now that i've been able to get a little bit of free time to kind of oh. figure out who's money outside of trezor uh, and especially because like you said I'm only, I'm only 19 like i'm still like at that stage of like figuring out what yeah. what do i like doing what do i want to do like mm. what's next what's what what can i do outside of my business so yeah that's still in the Have works you found, um let's say an expensive hobby where you spend your profits on <laughs> have you found one yet or is it still the straight reinvestment it's so how it works now that i have a business partner is i can't just remove money from the business whenever mm. i feel like it yeah yeah because yeah. we're 50 50 like mm. we take uh, we'll take a dividend at the end of the year if he wants to take one if i want to take one we discuss mm. it and then we'll see who does what but i have my salary and my salary will just go on you know it's pretty much clothes like i spend so much money on clothes yeah. and because I, I i don't know like i just feel like that's something that most that's a girly thing isn't it yeah. it's a girly thing shopping but i don't really have an expensive hobby to be honest with oh, you no, no okay no, that makes sense um now going back to when law sugar joined mm. what was the whole process of that even happening yeah initially what made you think to and I feel like it's kind of bold to even go towards <laughs> Lord Sugar. You right. Know, you didn't even go on the apprentice, you skipped all the steps. <laughs> like, like, that's oh why I want to get to that. Just what, how do you get to that? So, um, 
do you know what it was, yeah? I was watching The Apprentice with my mum, and I've only ever watched one season of The Apprentice, by the way, literally just one. It was a season with, like, Alana, the cupcake girl. Yeah. I thought she was so cute. I loved it. And I watched it with my mum, um, and she was like, you could do that. I was like, no, I can't. I'm, like, I'm not going to go on TV and do that. She's like, why don't you apply? I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. But um, so I was stalking Lord Sugar on Twitter because everybody says, like, you know, he, he like, cusses people out on Twitter. He does. He's, he's hilarious. He's so funny. <laughs> yeah. But he, um, I was stalking him on Twitter and he put, he put like, um, if you need uh, small businesses, if you need help, message me. It was during lockdown. And message me or whatever. So, okay, let me send him an email. Couldn't find his email. Found his company. I emailed it, like, Everyone at the company. <laughs> Not everyone. I just sent emails like again and again. I was like, I got a question. But can you put me in touch with Lord Sugar? Can I talk to Lord Sugar? Can I speak with Lord Sugar? Mm. And like, no one's responded to me. I'm like, sending emails again. Can I, can I talk with Lord Sugar? This is my business. I, I'm this. I'm this. Can I talk to Lord? They're like, they're all thinking, what the hell? Like, this yeah. girl, <laughs> leave us alone. And then one day on like a Sunday night, like a Saturday or Sunday night, I get like an email and it's got like Lord Sugar in capitals. Oh, yeah, and it comes from like it, it, his company AMS hold like AMS. It's like so it comes from an email that has AMS. And I think what the hell's AMS? What the hell? Alan Michael Sugar? He's literally Lord Sugar from his email address. Uh, like he's emailed me personally. Oh. Yeah, and I'm thinking I can't respond to that. I'm like I'm like looking at it like this. I'm like. Also, sorry to interrupt. What yeah. stage was the business at at this point as well? This was I just got my first office. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it was a lot. Small, you know, what? it was the size of this studio. Okay. okay. My entire office was in here. There's two girls working for me. Mm. They had my stock. I was like 100k on TikTok and like 30, 40k on Instagram. And like I messaged him and I was like, look, like this is what I've got going on. He was yeah. like, okay. He messaged me back. Okay, come to Loughton in two days. Come see me. Let's talk. So you just... Where, where is it? Where is London? Off the side of London. Oh, okay, okay. Just literally, I had to get the train from Birmingham to London, then the tube for like an hour out of London. Uh, right, you know, it's right at the end of the tube line, like from, wow. from Euston. It's like... So 40 minutes, I was sat. And you know what's hilarious? I was late. I was late. How late? 40 minutes late. Wow. And I was... I was so scared. On the way there, you must have been thinking so, of all sorts of stuff. I was like, I'm going to get a bollock in the second I get in. He's going to be like, turn around and leave. Like, oh, I was so scared. I was scared for my life. Wow. <laughs> but um, yeah, I got there. They picked me up at the train station and then I went and I like walk up the stairs, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, there's like a table like this. And there's like two people here, two people here. He's like there. Wow. I like walk up the stairs and the door, his door's open. I make eye contact with him. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, even like you know didn't even know what to do then the adrenaline kicks in and I'm like oh smiling oh why have you been me and like I just spoke to him I showed him my products I showed him stuff like um told him about like what's what I do and how I do it and he was just like okay cool like I want to invest in your business um talking of which and you know my audience is based on investing whatnot, yeah what um figures did he ask to see and how did he make you know, okay. well, how do you make a decision thinking, yeah, this is great, let me look into this? Or was it more based on your character? <laughs> I like to think it's because I'm nice. No, he, um, so he, we, what did I give him? I gave him my, I gave him some management accounts for a couple of months, like six months or something. Okay, cool. And for him, he was happy with my margin uh -huh. because my costs, I had no marketing costs at that point. Mm -hmm. No marketing costs. I wasn't spending any money on ads. I wasn't spending any money on trialing things. I was just doing what was working and it was working. Yeah. So I, everything was free. Like I was making money from TikTok, Instagram, like yeah. I said, reels. Yeah. And he was like, okay, this is cool. Like I like this, you low overheads. And, and you know, if we increase your volume of sales, your profits will be, be big. So that's why he wanted in. And for me, it was like, you know, everyone felt like that's 50% of your business that like you built for two years. Mm. Two years is not a long time, but for me, it's a long time. I mean, I'm not, yeah. like, not even 20, like two years is a long time. Yeah. And, and it was like, even it, it, within me, I felt, how can I give away so much mm -hmm. that we're deadlocked? Because now it's completely half and half. Yeah. Any decision I make, he can say something about it. Uh, Any yeah. decision he makes, I can say something about it. Wait, so it's, it's not to pocket watch, but like mm. it's, it's half and then half of half between you and your business partner. Or the business partner you've been referring to this whole time? Was... Chisel, uh, Lord Sugar. Oh, I, I, for some reason I thought um, nah. it was just someone... Nah. Uh, my just bad. me. <laughs> just me. It's literally just me because I built it from, from 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scratch, what yeah. it was from scratch, yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, Lord Sugar is the, the business partner, in case yeah. you didn't realise. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, he um so it's half between me and him. <laughs> so when he invested um Can you dispose of it a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, not really. But um he invested more than what his share was worth. Yeah. Essentially, because I just suppose he doesn't have faith in me in it. Like he was like, Yeah, take it. I was like, okay. So the money then um was his initial investment kind of like you know, he was buying a share. Mm. And it's 50-50, like literally straight down the middle, not like 49, 50, 51, mm. nothing. Mm. It's 50-50. Mm. So, so a lot of that is like, um, so the money's closely watched now. Yeah. Not that, you know, I was doing anything wrong, but like, um, because it's split between two business partners, Yeah. everything is everyone's. Yeah. So, so it's a lot of a... Would you <laughs> say, um, after, you know, joining him, would it say it affected the way you made decisions and mm. the way you took and treated the business? Yeah, definitely. So mm -hmm. I have, um, his, his management accountant does obviously choose all accounts. So I talk with him a lot. Um, <laughs> so bad. Yeah. I would like, they, like your business card is your business card. Yeah. And when you run a small business, you're going to like occasionally, you know, buy your lunch on the business card or something. Yeah, you think yeah, we all do it. Yeah, come, no, of course, come on, we all do it. Yeah, you know, we entertain the client. You, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can't do that anymore. Oh, like he's strict, like <laughs> not strict, but like in a sense that, like, that it's disrespectful in a, if, for me because I think like if I spend the money, that's half his. He's basically uh, paid for my lunch. Uh, Come on, it's rude, isn't it? It's rude. Okay. It's rude. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like yeah, if I spend twenty pound, ten of it's his. Do you get what I'm saying? Because the profits, ten of it, ten pound is his. Mm -hmm. So like I, I'm just, I would say I'm more careful of how I spend the money. Yeah. And I'm probably a bit more, yeah, I feel a bit more strict on myself. Mm. But that's okay because now that like, um, I wasn't taking really a salary before, mm. but now that I'm with him, we, we negotiate a service contract. So I have a salary, like an actual set salary that I get every month now. Mm. So it doesn't feel as, you know, messy as it did. Mm. Cause I got my money to spend, so I don't really mind. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't nice, really mind. Nice but, yeah. um, how would you say he is compared to the Apprentice series? How's he in person? Do you know, he's actually, <laughs> I'm just recording. He's actually pretty similar. <laughs> really? Oh, that, that's yeah. Do you know what? He doesn't shout at me. He never does. He and you know what? He's not disrespectful to anyone. He's mm. a great. He's an amazing, amazing man, and, and I really look up to him. And he, but he is hilarious. He's so funny. You know, one time he. <laughs> sorry, I can't even. <laughs> I can't even. You know, he's just funny. Like he says crazy things all the time. Like oh, wow. one time we like um, in an email thread about something, right? And somebody sends an email at four a.m. Mm. and he emails back and he's like, "Go to bed." <laughs> Huh? Wow. I was like you. Were, I was like, oh my gosh, he's hilarious. He's so funny. But uh, yeah, he says crazy things. He does, and he's definitely hard. But he's he's quite nice in a sense that like um, I had. I don't know if we've spoken about Twitter or anything, but since when he first posted me, there was yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah so there was a lot about like he posted that tweet. <laughs> And there was like so many comments. I'd never used Twitter before, mm. before that. I had to make Twitter because of the announcement. Yeah. Otherwise I wouldn't have even been on there. I wouldn't have looked on Twitter. Yeah. But um, he posted that and, and the comments were like, she looks like a transsexual. Oh, <laughs> she looks God. like, she looks like a man. Or like somebody said like, does she have the right papers? Or like. <laughs> wow. So what, there was a lot of hate towards just you. Just trolls. Like, just trolls. And really, really nasty ones as well. Like, met comments on my looks, like, you know. Mm. Somebody said, uh, somebody called me a floozy. Like, I didn't even know what that is. Like, do you know, it means like, it means like, it means like. Oh, yeah. wow. And I was like, what the hell? And somebody else said something like, you know, there was a lot of stuff about, oh, you're a young girl, and he's an old guy. And I was like, don't even, don't even dare. Like, don't, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> I was like, don't even try it. Like, it, it was so bad. And, and for that, I, and because of that, I, like when, and he would obviously keep tweeting and he was tweeting about the business in a lot in the beginning as well, mm. because that's like how we do a lot of our marketing as well through him. So, and I mentioned to him in an email, like, hi, hi guys, like, can we, I didn't even send it to him. I sent it to the social media manager and I said, look, can we cut back on the tweets? Yeah. Oh, because you're so scared of the reaction. Yeah, and because I felt it was more bringing negative than, than anything. And it was mm. honestly getting to me, like it was actually getting to me. 
Because it's not, you like Twitter trolls are not like TikTok trolls. Yeah, Twitter trolls are brutal. They're, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll rip into you. Like, I was like, I, was, I can't handle this. It's not good for my mental health. But did, so, you, did you get any hate on TikTok, by the way? TikTok, yeah. It was, it was all, Here and there, but I, was TikTok hate, TikTok hate. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Twitter was something else. And so I mentioned it to him. And then obviously, social media manager guy, he, he forwarded it to Lord Sugar. And Lord Sugar was like, Money, like, no, that's so bad. Why would you say that? He was like annoyed. I felt like he was annoyed. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, shit, like, I pissed off Lord Sugar. Like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> so I messaged him, and obviously, I was like, he messaged me, and, and I, he voice noted me, and I, I voice noted him back, and I was very no noticeably upset. Mm -hmm. And he, he turned around, and he's like, come on, Marnie, like, look, you need to separate yourself from this now. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to separate yourself. Like, he said, like, I made, I made a billion pounds. People still take the piss out of me. <laughs> That's but true. you know don't care about it don't care about these trolls do what you're doing and and i was like, oh my god you're so nice and i was like crying more like, you're so nice, yeah, nice. <laughs> he's probably thinking what the hell i'm regretting this now. <laughs> i'm getting this girl but no he was he he's like got his tough tough side but he's also yeah, he's, a human being isn't he and he's a good he's an amazing mentor he is mm, like the imagine. advice that yeah the advice that you can get from him so you can call him up not whenever but you can yeah, call him up pretty much send him a whatsapp message or something yeah. he'll respond at some point he's pretty responsive but um yeah he did give a lot of advice as well in the beginning and like showing me so he's like quite invested in a sense of, like Oh, like he was in Paris, like showing me, sending me pictures of toe rings, like oh, in a market, oh. like sending me. I was like, oh wow. Because one thing people may have thought was um, he might have just been a cash cow. Yeah. But it seems like he's providing management accountants. He's, he's providing a whole entire experience. Like he has a team that handles a lot of things. Mm. So obviously he has this company, um, Amshold, Amsvest, whatever. Yeah. They have people who work there, management accountants, social media managers, tech people. And I use them, like when I need to, I have access to his team of amazing people. And all of them are so, so helpful yeah. that it's just been, it's just been, and that was what it was for me. It was like, I didn't just want the money. Yeah. Otherwise I couldn't have given up 50% of my business for a bit of money. Yeah, yeah. Like it was, it was, it was, you know, the reputation, the mm. like, all the team he had to offer me, a lot of stress off my head. It, it was the whole package that, that enticed me to take the deal. Yeah, no, that's, that's very, very yeah. big. Um, now I want to move a little bit back. You dropped out of uni. Mm. Talk me through that process of, process of why you did that. Obviously to do with Trezor, but yeah. um, how was it? How was the reaction with your friends and your family? Mm. Um, and obviously it paid off, but yeah. at the time, what was it? What was the dynamics like? So, um, well, I was at uni. I started my first year. I did my first year, pretty much almost all of it. But I was getting to the end of it, and it was like I was looking back and I was thinking, this has been rubbish. I was like, I hated this. I would have so many breakdowns. I would cry so much. And, and I would literally, literally, I would always say to my dad, like, I don't want to do uni. Like, I want to drop out. And I'd be like, no, you're staying at uni. And I'd be like, oh my God, okay. Like, you know, proper dramatic. And, and yeah. I just was thinking, like, why am I doing this to myself? Like, why am I torturing myself doing something that I hate? Because yeah. I didn't have fun. And, and you know, because of the pandemic, everything was online. Yeah. Everything was online. And, and I wasn't socialising. I wasn't meeting lecturers. I wasn't, I wasn't being in uni. And I just felt like come on what is this like I, I was just like this i don't want to do this and for me it was what is the best case scenario of me going uni okay i'm doing a marketing degree i'm gonna get i'm gonna get a degree in marketing i'm gonna go get a job that pays me 25 grand a year that's my best case scenario i have a business that's turning over six figures what am i doing i was like this is no so i just did did it i just left i dropped out and i did tell anyone I did oh, oh, no. just, just... i just did it Wow. I just did it. And literally, I had like one friend that knew. Oh, okay. And um, I just done it. I didn't even tell my dad. I didn't tell my dad. So, yeah. Also, it was all you just did it and told them after so then they couldn't I, interrupt. I, I told them after Lord Sugar, like three months later. And then I was like, Dad, I've been dropped out of uni for three months, but Lord Sugar's investing in my business. That's a good news. Uh, that's <laughs> he was like, He was like, what? <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> That's too many bombshells. <laughs> yeah, he was like, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I mean, it's smart to, like, to, to do it that way. Just, I was like, I need, you need a strategy. <laughs> to back it up. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you say the figures, though, the, the tone yeah. of it was enough? Or was, it was, it, more... it was. But I think it was, uh, I'm like the oldest child as well. So mm -hmm. I think for my parents, it was like... Bad example type of... Not bad example, more, more like, okay, we don't know if this is going to be a long-term sustainable business. Mm. Even I don't know that. Nobody knows that. Yeah. But it was for them the safer option was for me to go to university. Yeah. And and when you're Asian as well, that's the common thing. It's like go to uni, get a degree, be a doctor or whatever. Well, I wasn't going to be a doctor. <laughs> I was going to go into marketing, but still, it just 
it just um, was it's scary for any parent for a person to drop out of university like imagine yeah. you told your parents like yeah, no, <laughs> scary crazy, no, crazy. Yeah. Um, I'll just finish it it's fine um, third year, just... <laughs> final year let's get it yeah but um, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's mad and um, I think in terms of scaling your business mm. um, would you say there's any um, tips and tricks you can give to the audience of you know that you learned along the way when it came to scaling it because mm. it's not as simple as just selling more volume per se mm. there needs to be a strategy behind it yeah so in the beginning um i didn't have as many products as well even when i first got my my first office um that was like a big expense for me as well i, I was like can i even afford this so mm. i could but it was still difficult it went from being in my bedroom to being in an office mm. i have to pay something now yeah and then i have to pay people and then my strategy the whole way through had been the money that I'm saving, the money that's a profit, I'm reinvesting it in new products so I can have a bigger range, so I can give people more, more choice. And so that was what I continued to do. Even when I moved into my office, I kept the money, I bought new stock, different designs. When you're in stuff like fashion or stuff like that, you spend money on developing designs, yeah. samples, new lines, things like that. And I just wanted to be like, I, I wanted to be like my competitors that had like 300 products or like 200 mm. products. It was a lot because I had like 10. Yeah, so I was just, I just started to expand. Now we've got close to like 100, 115 wow. different products. So we have a lot of products. But um, yeah, it was just about expanding my lines so I could give people more things to buy because I already had the eyes on my business. Mm. Some people had purchased two or three times and they had all my products. That's it, done. Uh, now they have to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was that. Would you say... There's a thing, there's something called fast fashion, but would you say there's something called fast jewellery? Um, jewellery comes out of fashion, so yeah, oh, I think yeah, so. Yeah. And I think what it is, is, um, so, so my jewellery, we define it as demi-fine jewellery. Okay. So it's your kind of fine, kind of not. Yeah. So it's not your fashion jewellery that you can get from like Primark or whatever. And you, and you put it on your hands and you wash your hands and it makes, green, it makes them green and <laughs> goes black. And you, come on, you don't want that. That's your costume jewelry. Wow. And your fine jewelry is your diamonds, your solid gold, etc. And then I'm kind of the middle ground. So my stuff is stainless steel, but it's double plated in 18 karat gold. Um, so with my jewelry, it's gonna last. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be on, on your hands for years. Yeah. And so, and with, uh, in terms of sustainability, stainless steel is actually one of the best materials for the environment and yeah. one of the best metals in the environment because it's recyclable and it can continue to be recycled again and again and it also doesn't use a lot of water to produce mm. so a lot of our materials are recycled but we don't advertise that because not all are and then um, it's just gold plated over the top so I think I don't do much talking about oh, combating fast fashion mm. but I'm definitely not for it and I'm yeah. definitely someone who wants to be a bit more sustainable sustainable for the long term yeah um, talking of your customers and your jewellery mm. what is the most heartwarming maybe gift mm -hmm. you know has anyone bought like a ring to give to someone and they might have shown you in the video yeah. and it just, it just thought wow my yeah. products are I put this on my story a while back but um, this this girl she um Oh my gosh, it makes me emotional. <laughs> she, she ordered a necklace. We do engravings here, right? Mm. We engraved our jewellery and stuff like that. So she ordered a, a sunshine necklace and on the yeah. back of it, there were two dates. So it was like something 80 something, like 1980 something yeah. to 2000, what, 2000, 2020, 2021. Yeah. Um, and I was like, you know, this looks like, you know, somebody, this is a remembrance of someone. Mm. So we gave her uh, we left her a note, like, you know, we're really sorry for your loss and whatever. And we gave her a butterfly bracelet. We just put a butterfly bracelet in for free, just out of, you know, goodwill. Yeah. And she makes a video and she's like, um, my granddad passed away. So I ordered this necklace about, you know, with his dates on there so I can keep him close to my heart. And she shows this like setup she's got. Yeah. She says, well, like, when, I, when I remember my granddad, I've always used the butterfly as a symbol and her whole setup is covered in butterflies and everything. Oh, so so she, she was like, so it felt so right that she was like emotional that, they, that we had sent her a butterfly. Obviously we didn't know. Yeah, so you just put, put We it just put it. Yeah, just and, and you know, it ended up being that. And it was like, you know, when she made the video, I was like, you know, like this is so like, it's like it's meant to be like, to be, yeah. I don't know. It was, that was a, a point of like, 
that's like you know you're doing justice emotional yeah, yeah, doing yeah. Justice, i mean it's lovely but we get that a lot of people are ordering like dates on there or we also have like you know um cute messages like like one said um <laughs> you're gonna have to, to beep it out <laughs> she said smile bitch like <laughs> Yeah. I love it. They, they they put such funny things to each other. But people gift giving is, is really popular in jewellery. So we get a lot of people that are buying it for other people. Yeah. So we have a lot of stories, but yeah. Now smooth. So when would you say, what parts of the year, what celebrations or holidays where sales just mm. go crazy like Valentine's Yeah, so Q4 in general is oh. our, our busiest. Because mm. obviously Black Friday, mm. Christmas, Boxing Day. Yeah. So in in that time, it's... The, the volume office, is there. The office is yeah. busy. Yeah. <laughs> it's busy. Valentine's Day also, but um, we tend to have a quieter like Jan. Jan, yeah. your summer months are quieter because people are out and about on holiday or whatever. Mm. But um, definitely just key for the last three, three, four months of the year is where, where it's mm. at. That's smooth. And um, obviously, you mentioned where you are in terms of the jewelry spectrum. Mm. Do you ever see yourself? like expanding more out maybe to the final jewelries or do you, mm. do you like the niche and the the location you are in now in the space yeah so the whole point of my jewelry was affordability, affordability. but but being able to look expensive without feeling expensive like mm. spending too much money mm. and so i don't know i don't think i would do that i, don't, I think I, I like where i'm at in terms of the fact that my jewelry looks like gold but it's not yeah. i just like that i prefer that nah, nah, nah. that's that's definitely great um would you say for the future, your husband will have Trezor Julie as yeah, well? Yeah, of course. Everything of course. Is Everyone, all my friends wear it. Like, I, I literally make everybody rep Trezor. So. Mm, Trezor <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice. That's, that's definitely the way. Cool. So, a lot of people may be looking up to you and thinking, wow, you're doing this at 19. What tips and tricks would you say, or characteristic tricks that you have yourself mm. that may have got you to this position that you can share to the audience? I don't know. I always find this a difficult one because I never know what about myself make, makes me who I am as an entrepreneur. But mm. I think that, um, honestly, not caring. Like, mm. I've never been one to care what people think. Yeah. I don't care. People, so many people laughed at me in the beginning of this. Like, people, mm. people, you and your little jewelry business. Like, I had, I had a lot where it was like a not um, positive, no, like neg a lot of negativity, mm. and I just never cared. Like, just I just was like, you know what, like. Yeah. I don't care. And if you and if you honestly stop thinking about what everybody around you is gonna say, mm. your life's gonna be so much better. Come yeah. on. Like if you stop like people will, will literally nitpick at everything. For sure. And if you don't pay attention to that, yeah, you're no, chilling. A similar story for me, um, when I started TikTok and um, creating content, mm. people were telling me so kids why on the app. Yeah. But you know, I just ignored them and kept going and, and look where you are now. Yeah, so um that's a really, really big, big point right there. Guys, stop caring about what other people think. Just go forward with your vision. Do You're what you want to do. Yeah, literally. That's, that's very, very great. Um, final question. When starting Business 17, if you could tell yourself a piece of advice, what would you say to yourself? Let's say the 17 okay. you walked in. What would you say? What, you only have one sentence you could say. I would say one sentence. Okay, okay, okay. Mate, okay. A few, a few, a few, a few. Okay. I would say don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Because you know what? When you're, when you're, especially being stubborn comes under being an entrepreneur sometimes. Yeah. You're stubborn. You're going to be a stubborn person because you want to get what you want. Mm. But don't be afraid to, to seek advice from people who are better than you. And don't feel embarrassed about it. There's no shame mm. in looking for a mentor. And if you see people doing better than you, reach out. Yeah, that's, mm. that's true. That's true. That's great. I like that one. That's, it shows humbleness it shows you know yeah i like it it's smooth um i hope you guys really enjoyed this episode with marnie it was very very great to have her on thanks for Make having sure you me take advice from Lord sugar's business partner <laughs> youngest <laughs> young yeah the youngest wow what, 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 what a caption i hope you lot enjoyed it you already know it's pokey bits baby 